Hello and welcome to Recyclist. It's August 4th, 2023. I'm your host, Eric Provost, and this is all the biggest news stories in the world of waste, gas, and energy presented by Diamond Scientific. First up, and as always, let's take a quick look at the stock market where across the industry, there's been a major drop off over the past week. As of midday August 4th, 2023, the Southern California Gas Company, Vanek Low Carbon Energy, and Invesco Global Clean Energy are all currently trading at a volume of zero. Vanguard ESG is trading at a volume of 24, Waste Management is currently at a volume of just 327, and Clean Energy Fuels Core is currently at a volume of 421. But moving into the news, first up, Amethyst Incorporated, a renewable natural gas and renewable fuels company focused on negative carbon intensity products, just secured its second $25 million 20-year term loan from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. With this, the Amethyst Biogas Central Dairy RNG project is now fully funded to build biogas digesters and related assets for eight additional dairies, using the $9.4 million of equity financing already provided by Amethyst and the $25 million from the USDA. Amethyst has built and is fully operating dairy biogas digesters for seven dairies, a 40-mile biogas pipeline, a central biogas to renewable natural gas production facility, and the PG&E gas utility interconnection unit. When completed, the biogas digesters for the combined 15 dairies are designed to produce more than 400,000 metric million BTUs per year of carbon-negative renewable natural gas. When fully built, the Amethyst Biogas Project plans to connect dairy digesters spanning more than 65 dairy farms, producing more than 1.6 million meter BTUs of renewable natural gas from captured dairy methane each year. The project is designed to reduce greenhouse gas emissions equivalent to an estimated 6.8 million metric tons of carbon dioxide over 10 years, equal to removing the emissions of approximately 150,000 cars per year. But moving from government loans to government subsidies, a brand new report shows that U.S. subsidies for renewable energy producers more than doubled between 2016 and 2022, forming nearly half of all federal energy-related support in that period. Renewable subsidies jumped to $15.6 billion in fiscal year 2022, up from $7.4 billion in 2016, according to the Energy Information Administration's Federal Financial Interventions and Subsidies in Energy Report. Most of those subsidies took the form of tax incentives in recent years, with solar applications making up the largest share of the subsidies due in part to rapid industry growth. That growth also helped solar overtake the share of biofuels, which was the largest beneficiary of tax incentives in 2016. In 2021, funding for the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program, which assists with energy bills and other energy-related costs, saw a one-time doubling to nearly $10 billion after Congress approved additional funding for the program under its COVID-19 relief plan. Meanwhile, Subsidies related to natural gas and petroleum became a net cost to the U.S. government, which gave tax breaks worth $2.1 billion in fiscal year 2022, compared with a revenue inflow of $2.2 billion in fiscal years 2016 and 2017 combined. And while solar is certainly performing incredibly well, demand for renewable natural gas is still on the rise. As this past week, the Coalition for Renewable Natural Gas celebrated the fact that North America now has 300 operational renewable natural gas facilities, up from just 30 facilities in 2011 when the coalition was founded. The coalition says this extraordinary growth reflects the RNG industry's steadfast commitment to mitigating climate change, fostering energy security, and ensuring a cleaner, greener future for present and future generations. 
Coalition CEO and founder Johannes Escudero said, quote, the monumental increase in RNG facilities developed over the last decade plus is reason to celebrate, unequivocally. RNG facilities are an imperative to mitigating methane and carbon in our advancement toward a more sustainable society and circular economy, end quote. And just a reminder, Recyclist is brought to you by Diamond Scientific, proud sponsor of the PFL Featherweight Playoffs, live August 23rd on ESPN and ESPN Plus from Madison Square Garden. Make sure to reach out to them for all of your gas analysis, instrumentation, and solutions needs at diamondsci.com. That's diamondsci.com. Or call them at 321 223 75 Zero, zero. Now on with the news. Now moving to Illinois, a brand new law signed in July 28th is creating a statewide paint recycling program. According to Illinois State Senator Linda Holmes, the chief sponsor of the new law, over 1 million gallons of paint will be managed annually under an industry-managed paint recovery and recycling program. The program is anticipated to go into effect in 2025 and will offer hundreds of conveniently located drop-off locations throughout the state. There will be no cost to residents and businesses when dropping off their unwanted paint for recycling. Funding to run the program will be included in the cost of new paint. Illinois is the 11th state in addition to the District of Columbia to adopt this model program, which will be managed by Paint Care a nonprofit organization created by the paint industry through the American Coatings Association. Other states that have enacted similar legislation over the past several years are California, Colorado, Connecticut, Minnesota, Oregon, Rhode Island, Maine, New York, Washington, and Vermont. And speaking of recycling, the government just announced a new $100 million grant program aimed at subsidizing carbon recycling purchases by state and local governments, as well as public utilities. The initiative, spearheaded by the Energy Department, will fund a range of technologies and projects that recycle carbon waste, work to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and build a circular economy. Jeff Cooper, CEO of the Renewable Fuels Association, said that the funding will also help stimulate demand and make these technologies more competitive, saying, quote, the program will significantly lower the cost of these products for state and local governments and public utilities, which in turn will increase the size of the market for recycled carbon. The funding will consist of grants to help cities and towns pay for carbon recycling technologies that transform waste emissions into valuable resources. The Energy Department said municipalities can apply for grants to fund projects that either divert waste or reduce future carbon emissions, which can include recyclable materials that would otherwise end up in landfills. And lastly, we'll highlight one additional government-sponsored program, this time from the EPA. The Environmental Protection Agency announced more than $523,000 in funding to 21 student teams for their research and innovative solutions to address environmental and public health challenges as part of the agency's People, Prosperity, and the Planet program. Chris Frey, the Assistant Administrator for the EPA's Office of Research and Development, said, quote, EPA's P3 program, now in its 20th year, is an exciting and unique program that recognizes the power of students to translate imagination and science into new solutions that protect human health and the environment. Congratulations to this year's teams. Their innovative projects tackle critical environmental issues and include an eco-friendly coating to reduce contamination in marine environments, a device to remove microplastics from stormwater, an air monitoring and filtration technology to reduce student exposures to air pollutants, and more. End quote. And that has been your Recyclist News Update for August 4th, 2023, presented by Diamond Scientific. I've been your host, Eric Provost, and I'll see you back next Friday for another Recyclist News Update. Thank you.